Hey, Justin Skinner here, and today I'm going to show you the Neato Fastback and how to put it together. This Neato Fastback here is a little more complicated than the other Neato frames that we've had in the past, the Dallas not included, because it is modular and same as the Dallas was, and anytime you have a modular frame, you're going to have more parts to the puzzle. So I want to do a video just to show you all what we have going on. This is still prototyped. Um, this is our version 2, and it's looking pretty close to finish. So, I thought I'd show a video and let you see what all is included, how it's put together, and show you the final product, which will look like this right here. And this is actually right here with 5.5 inch arms, but the one I'll be putting together is 5 inch arms. So, as you see, it has four arms, two body plates, the pod covering and a whole bunch of hardware. Now the first thing you're going to notice when you're putting it together is these little pieces right here. These little hex spacers are press fitted right into your arms. Now it, the tolerances on the prototype is not quite there so in order to get it in I have to actually use a hammer which I'm going to do off screen real quick. Once you do that it's press fitted just like that, and you do that to all of your arms. Now to put this together, you're only gonna need two tools. You need a two millimeter hex and a 5.5 box tool. This is for your M3 nuts over here. And to get started, I recommend grabbing your, your bottom plate and your top plate. And how this is gonna work, this is your bottom and you don't want to be able to read neato from the top. That's supposed to go like this. It's supposed to look unintelligible when you're looking at it from the top. That's because neato is on the bottom. While I'm doing this, while we're looking at it, let's talk about the features. On the bottom plate, you're going to be looking at, let me make sure this is in focus. The bottom plate has quite a few functional aspects to it, starting with the wings on the side and their holes is for zip ties, accessories such as transponders, uh, your LED lights if you want to rig them up. And then right here in the middle, this is where you're going to see the battery strap slot, which also doubles as your stack mounting point. So you have the two holes on both sides right here. You'll see them right there. That's where your stack mounts to. And then you have this slot is where you can slide the battery strap. Now we've gone ahead and extended this out further, making it easier to add a strap if you happen to break one in the field because previously we just had the slot straight across and it was quite difficult to add a a new strap if you broke one in the field and this has solved that quite well I might add. Other than that you're gonna have this zip tie hole right here these are just extra little bits in case you have something you want to mount you want to zip tie down it's just there to help you and then this right here this big old hole is actually to give you access to your top plate. Now on the top plate this being the front, this being the back. So it'll stack just like this. As you see, from the bottom plate, you can access your camera mounting point. This will be one of the ways you can mount your camera. And then here in the back, this is a little multifunctional area as well. Just like the bottom plate where we had all the different zip tied holes, we've added this in the back to run your pigtail for your XT60 through to help it keep it protected so it doesn't get sliced into carbon in case you land on the back side. And also we have little zip tie notches in case you want to zip tie something down, such as your antenna. And you can slide it in and out right there. So starting off, you're going to stack them like this. Line up the holes, and you're going to grab your little 10 millimeter bolts, and you're going to start with the sides going top down. These two go top down. And then we're just going to add a quick nut on each side. And then your other two go bottom up. So we're creating a system that will hold your frame in place locked steady. So because between these two plates, your arm's going to slide in. Now what this is doing, it's creating a way for this, these, these side pieces will clamp the top plate down while these middle pieces will clamp the bottom plate down giving it a very very tight tight fit once you fit your arms in there. 
But once it's done, it's like this. You grab an arm and long side uh, going down towards the middle, short side going towards the front. You just slide it in. And these bolts right there, if you, if you look, we got little rivets, little little dents into the carbon, little cutouts, whatever you want to call them. They uh, fit up nice and flush to those bolts on the front and the middle. And then the spacer, the hex spacer, fits right in the middle of this hole. And you take your long bolt and from the bottom, you screw it up inside. Now once you have this cranked in, nice and tight, this arm already, even with this being loose, it's already locked in. All by itself, no pressure up against other arms, it's not budging. And that's one of the reasons we did this uh, with the nut inside, we wanted to try to create a really stable base uh, to start off with. If that hex nut can't move and you have it lo locked in real tight right here, it's not going anywhere. The middle and the, uh, the, the front middle and the side middle bolts, those are there for extra support in a hard crash and also to help us flex in the entire frame. And you'll see that in a second. So we're going to go ahead and do the rest of the arms. Same thing, long piece on the side. Now all the arms are in. I just want to show, before I even tighten the top plate down, solid. Now we're gonna tighten these bolts, bolt nuts down. All right, so there's no flex, there's no, there's no slop. That's one of the things we wanna make sure to eliminate is all slop. The bolts on the side are to eliminate flex, so. And see right here, you're gonna see a little give right there. And that's because this washer will go there once you have this on top and that locks it down. But there's no flex in the middle on any plane. All right, and as you can see, so this right here, we're running a two millimeter bottom and top plate as well as five millimeter arms. So you're looking at nine millimeters of carbon right there, but we had this huge pocket in the middle to take out that weight and it also allows us to keep your stack really low. Our goal was to keep it very low. And I'm running purposely long bolts at the moment because I bought a bunch of 25 millimeter bolts. That way I can cut them down to size until we have the exact measurements down. I just want to be flexible. Uh, and actual kits, when we sell these, will have their specific, whoops, missed one. They will have the specific length that you need. So you won't have to worry about cutting it down. You won't have longer bolts than necessary or shorter bolts. You'll have the right length. There you go. So with all the hardware, our, our, our with the pocket like this and how it's built, you have seven millimeters that you can go down deeper into the body. You can, you can stack it flush with the top. You can use the bottom as a pocket to store your RX, your transmitter, or whatever you want. We're, we're trying to keep it very flexible. Um, it's already going to be more of an expert build because of the the compactness of everything, how small your build has to get down to. So it's not necessarily a beginner friendly build, but if you've been building for a while, if you've been if you've built other racers that have been stack based, short little small bodies, then this will be very similar to that. But we hope you'll enjoy it more uh, for its aesthetics as well as for its durability. We hope it's gonna end up being very durable. Each kit will come with extra arms and we're figuring everything else out, all the details, as we get closer and closer to launch. Uh, there's still some details we need to, there's some smaller changes we're gonna make to the actual frame. Uh, you see how this, this wing comes down out a little bit? Well, where you see that edge of the zip tie hole, so right here, that's actually going to be where it comes out at. It's going to, uh, we're gonna remove this extra area, so it's gonna come in a little bit more. And then, what else is changing? This hole is going to be a little bit bigger, so the logo will come down a little bit smaller because this is the tool I use, and I can't get to the nut with this tool. I have to use pliers, which is not a big deal, but you know we want to make this as convenient as possible. 
And to remove an arm, all you have to do is remove this one bolt and pull the arm out and slide a new one in, put the bolt back in, and you're good to go. I think that's about it when it gets put on. The pods, we're currently using a new material. This is not TPU that you see right here. This is a, a little bit more sturdy material called TPE. It doesn't come in as many colors as the TPU, the Sane Smart TPU that you've seen other Neato frames, but like, that's me. That's a lot of pressure right there. So like one-handed, I'm shaking, I'm squeezing so hard. So it'll, it's gonna take a better impact than the TPU pod. So here's a TPU pod. And it's not gonna work as well because I don't have it locked in, but it, it flexes a lot, a lot easier than the TPE. So that's why we're going with TPE right now. We're still exploring the pod issue. We thought about getting it injected, molded. Um, we thought about polycarbonate material. Uh, we're still exploring it. I, I kind of prefer to have some give when you hit something so it bounces. So let's take a look at the weight. This is with the five millimeter arms uh, that we're probably gonna end up going with. We may go with four millimeter. I haven't broken an arm, uh, a four millimeter or more arm. I have broken a three millimeter arm uh, right here. You know, where most people actually break their arms, it goes right across these two uh, holes. And lately I've been seeing people drop one of these holes for their motor mounting. And that's actually really clever. Whoever came up with that, that, that was a very clever solution because what that does is it gives you a lot more carbon strength right there. So we may, we may remove one of these holes and do the four millimeter. Um, but right now we're leaning towards five. And so five millimeter weight. Those four nuts right there are 1.6 grams. There's four more. So you're looking at about three grams of nuts on here. And then we throw the whole rest of the pot on. And it's 112.5. So 112.5 gets you this with five millimeter arms. Dropping down to four millimeter arms would save you uh, about 12 or so grams. I think it was three grams per arm. And so our goal was 100 grams, but for durability's sake, we ended up increasing to five millimeter as well as two millimeter top and bottom plates. And so that's still up for debate. Um, we've noticed most of our customers prefer durable over lightweight, but this was supposed to be a racer, is supposed to be a racer. And so definitely open to your feedback down below. Um, would you prefer durability? You know, the extra 12 to 15 grams added on for the extra durability, or would you prefer us drop it you lose durability, but you gain a little bit of weight savings. You know, throw it out there in the comments. Definitely down to hear what you have to say. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you uh, actually putting it together with uh, electronics in it. So stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Get ready for the fastback. We're hoping to have it out in the next month or so. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hi.